Sometimes one squad becomes so powerful and cements such a place in my heart that I need to dedicate an entire video just to them. My name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman, and welcome back to the channel. Unicorn Overlord. Hello everyone, if you enjoy what I do, my coverage of Unicorn Overlord, my guides, my news coverage, my let's plays, or just the way I conduct things around the channel in general, a like on this video and a subscription to the channel would be very much appreciated. We're pushing for 20K this year, and it seems like we might hit it sooner than we would expect. So if you could help out with that, that would be great. Thank you. So what is the topic of the day today? Well, as I said in the intro, my new favorite squad in Unicorn Overlord. If you've been watching the streams the past couple of nights, you already know who it is we're going to be talking about today. They are the Super Tax Brothers, and they are right here. Now... Why are they called the Super Tax Brothers? Well, for two reasons. First of all, obviously it's a riff on Super Smash Brothers, and let me tell you, all these fine lads do is smash, and smash, and bonk, and smash, and never stop, and never quit, and never give up, and never balk in the face of danger. They are just the most superhero of lads we have on our team. They even got the capes to prove it. But also, this is my money-making squad. This squad single-handedly rakes in more money just through their kills alone than you get from most missions in Cornea, okay? It's absurd. We're going to go through it. First off, we're going to show the build, why they work the way they do, why we have things set up the way that we do, and then in the second half, a mission showing just how efficient they are and just how capable they are. Let's start with the build. This is a four-man unit, as I've not yet unlocked the ability to make five-man units. However, every single member of this squad is promoted. Is that vital? Absolutely not. The Super Tax Brothers started off completely unpromoted with a Hoplite and three Cell Swords. They are now a Legionnaire and three Lance Nexts. They did not need to be that, except for the fact that it just makes them even more viciously efficient. The goal of the squad is to tank and then counter as many physical attacks as the enemy is able to throw at them and make a disgusting amount of money in the process. They make use of the natural tankiness of the Legionnaire to do this, to then trigger the Lanschnecht's following slash, which is where their primary damage is coming from. Our Legionnaire has a whopping 39 physical defense and a 53% guard rate before we even get to any of his abilities like Guardian, Heavy Cover, anything like that, so he can take an alarming amount of punishment. And to ensure that he's able to continue to do so as much as possible, he has a very particular setup. First of all, Black Iron Spear. Deals decent damage. Are there better options out there? Absolutely. But his weapon is really not the focus here. You can give him whatever he wants. We don't care about his damage. If there's a weak spear that gives him a good effect, like extra passive points, active points, some sort of defensive ability, cool. Go with it. But it's okay, even just on its own. The Dragonbone Great Shield is a key part of this. Extra physical defense, very good guard rate, very good guard efficiency, an extra point of passive points right off the bat. Good and then minus 10 initiative. Ideally, we don't really want our Legionnaire to be going and potentially triggering counterattacks or anything like that. Like he can chip in for a little bit extra damage at the end if we need it, but we don't typically need it. The really important thing here is the Salamander Ring and the Detoxifying Amulet. These two accessories make it so that the major damage over time effects of burn and poison will not be the bane of your Legionnaire's existence, as that was one of the major weaknesses that this squad had when I first constructed it. Now. With the Salamander Ring, we're completely immune to burn, and it gives us actually a nice bump to our magic defense. Nothing spectacular, 13 still ain't great, but I mean, it's better than five, I'll tell you that much. And it gives us a little bit of extra HP to work with as well, which is pretty great. Then the Detoxifying Amulet gives us another point of magic defense, poison immunity, and if someone else on the team happens to get poisoned, our Legionnaire can cure that as well, which is pretty dope. Now, the key thing comes in with our Landschnecks here, and let me tell you, Having three lads on one team that are just clearly Golden Age Berserk guts and act just like it is pretty great. When promoted from Cell Swords to Landschnecks, it is important to note as well that they do get a shield slot, which is pretty great. For, you know, if there's things that target the back line or whatever, our lads here can actually defend themselves a little bit more efficiently, which is nice. The big thing is their weapons. First off, Dagwin, Dragonbone Blade. Similar to the Great Shield that our Legionnaire has, it reduces initiative, gives plus one passive point, and has good physical attack. This is a slow squad. You'll see they typically have pretty poor initiative, except for Gregor, who's still not great. We'll talk about why that is in a second, but they don't need it. They absolutely do not need it because of the beauty of following Slash. 
We also have the Twin Dragon Shield, giving a burn immunity and freeze immunity here on Dagwin. Good guard efficiency, good physical defense. Any shields like this that you have that can give good special effects for these guys to help deal with magic, status effects, things like that, are a good way to go since there's really no healing to speak of in the squad. Then we have the Blue Spectacles to help with accuracy because that is something that Cell Swords can struggle with a little bit. And the most important piece, the Golden Egg. Why is this squad able to make so much money, you might ask? Well, if we just scroll through here, let's see, uh, we, got a, we got a golden egg, and then, uh, well, over here we have a, a golden egg, and then over here we have, uh, well, look at that, a golden egg, and also a bandit longsword that, oh, also functions like a golden egg. These stack. Every single one of these effects stack. So just on our gear alone, this squad is earning 400% gold. You can imagine how that can really start to stack up, and that's before we trigger any Valor abilities, use any items, anything like that. It's gross. All three of these lads have the same accessories. You can see a pair of blue spectacles and a golden egg so that they can guarantee to get their hits, or at least make it much more likely that they'll get their hits, and get way more income as a result. Moving over to Ajax, he also has a dragon bone blade. However, he has a Manolith buckler, plus five physical defense, 20% guard rate, 25% guard efficiency, and the magic wall active skill. Grants the user a buff that negates one magic attack or one affliction. This is something that I'm kind of just experimenting with. I'm not super happy with it because our initiative is so low, so typically magic attacks have already come out by the time we're activating this, but as enemy squads get promoted and get more active points, there will actually be more rounds of combat after we activate the magic wall, which means it could actually wind up being more useful. So I think this will actually get more powerful over time. And of course he has his golden egg and his blue spectacles. We'll touch on their skills in a second once we go through all of their gear. And then finally, Gregor with the bandit longsword. This is a phenomenal weapon. Like it's got more physical attack than dragon bone blade. It doesn't give the passive point, but it gives th plus three initiative, plus 10 evasion. And again, is also a golden egg. So you're getting plus 100% gold from it. It's really, really good. And you get this for free when you clear a particular liberation mission to free a walled city in Drakenhold. You'll see it here. I've got it on screen. Um, so yeah, you don't have to buy this. You don't have to find this anywhere special. Just play the game and free a region and you get it. Awesome. The other golden eggs you'll find scattered around different shops all over the world. You can get some as quest rewards from chicken quests and things like that. Like just be thorough, do your chicken quests, check your shops and you'll find them without too much issue. The Golden Ram Shield is just a very nice defensive piece, plus 5 physical defense, 20% guard rate, plus 25% guard efficiency, plus 10 max HP, and then stun immunity. So you'll see, scattered across our three lance necks here, like we've got a good variety of effects to keep them healthy, give them some resistances, and make sure that at least one of them at any time should be up using following slashes. Now, speaking of following slash, let's look at that really quick. This is the key piece of our fight here. We're not even worried about our active points most of the time. Most fights, you're going to finish just with following slashes before you ever actually use any of your active points. Following slash, if you did not know, says 75 physical potency, one hit, 90% hit rate. Activates after an ally is hit by an attack. Counterattack a single enemy. Grants the user plus one passive point if the attack hits. And notably, this is not a limited skill. Some skills you'll see have a limited trait on them. Uh, the sword fighter's initial like intro attack is notable for being a limited trait skill, so only one of them can activate in a given fight, even if you have three sword fighters in a squad. With this, it's not limited. So now, if any unit comes in and tries to smack our legionnaire, all three of our Lanschnecks in succession will come in to bring the smack down. And there are very few units that can survive all three of them hitting simultaneously, unless they've got some sort of good defensive ability or a shield that's likely to make them guard. And even then, they're gonna take a major hurting. Now, one of the weaknesses of following Slash is that it cannot target the back row, so you're going to have to carve your way through the front before you can actually start hitting the back, but being promoted, our Lanschnecks have two full rounds of combat available to them. So even if they just use their following Slashes to carve through the front line, that means that they all have a heavy Slash and Killing Chain to cut through the back line. By the time you're getting down to using active points, there's almost guaranteed to be at least one enemy unit that's in Killing Chain range. So at least one of your Lanschnecks will refresh an active point on that. And then if nothing else is below 50% HP to be able to potentially be finished off by a Killing Chain, they'll just start coming in with the heavy Slash. 
Heavy Slash deals 150 physical potency, one hit, 100% chance, or 100% hit rate, not 100% chance to hit. Those are different things, but. And then Killing Chain is similar, 100 physical potency, one hit count, 100% hit rate, gets an AP back if you defeat the target. These guys just become a blender. They are unstoppable. And I mean, I found, you're going to see in a second here with the second half of the video, that even enemies that significantly outlevel this squad crumple with a minimum of support. So I love this squad. Absolutely recommend that you pick these guys up, that you use a squad like this. And it's nice because the way I'm playing the game, I have a ton of generics that I've recruited because they're all patron characters. Like this whole squad here, my sword fighter squad, all patron characters. This squad here, other than Bruno, all patron characters. And it's been interesting because I am, as a limitation, as a challenge, forcing myself to use all of my patron characters. And now as we get them in, all my YouTube member characters as well. That means phasing out gener uh, uniques, like named story characters, so be it. If that means having unoptimal squads, just figuring out how to make it work, so be it. So we have some fun things going on here that I might not otherwise have tried because of the units that we have available to us. Now, that said, you do actually get three cell swords over the course of the story pretty easily. You'll get Jeremy, Magellan, and then Berenice. You can make this squad happen with Hodric, your starting hoplite, and those three cell swords by the time you get about a third of the way through Drakenhold. You can get this squad set up with very little effort. And again, I highly recommend that you do because there's very little that has been able to stop them thus far. Now, with that said, though, that's enough discussion of the build. Let's show you some practical examples of how this all works. So, for example, take a look at this fight here. This is a random liberation mission that I found in the northern end of Drakenhold. And what's interesting is these guys are level 24 compared to the, like 16 and 17 that our units are. So naturally, we're going to be at quite a disadvantage. However, take a look at this. The Super Tax Bros are going to smite this squad of sword fighters and soldiers, or, well, promoted sword fighters and soldiers in some cases, but we're going to handle them very easily. Now, we do need to make sure that we take out these couple of mage towers here because we will get pretty butchered by that. If the level difference wasn't so severe, that would be one thing, but thankfully we have a couple of wyverns here. I do want to stall until we aren't going to be getting attacked by the mages. And here we go. Things are about to get very, very interesting. The Lance Snack to the Cell Sword is just like such a disgustingly powerful unit. It's kind of insane, honestly. The mages are gone. Actually, we should probably make sure that they can't uh, attack our base now that I think about it. I'm out here trying to display a certain type of behavior and forgetting basic mechanics of the game. However, now they're forced to come to us rather than our base, and they're going to fold like a house of cards. Watch this. This is disgusting. One. <laughs> we got lucky and didn't even need any of the other attacks to come in. Oh, guaranteed crit for one damage. Oh, what a shame. Two. Three. We're going to get her eventually. Four. There it is. She got the parry, but that's fine. The funny thing is, is we still have so many passive points that it just doesn't matter. They're trying to deal any amount of damage to us that they can, and they just can't because our Legionnaire is just such a monster. Down she goes. Have a magic wall just in case we take some magic damage here. Not exactly necessary in this case, but it's something. Bonk. Bonk. <laughs> and again, like, I, I mean, I showed you guys in the beginning of the video, but it's not like we have any particularly super gear on these guys. Like... It's good stuff, but it's all just stuff that we got from going through Drakenhold. Like, the Dragonbone gear is just good. The Bandit Longsword you just get for doing the Liberation mission for the Walled City. Like, the Golden Eggs and the Blue Spectacles, that's standard stuff that we've seen since the beginning of Cornea. Like, it's really nothing particularly special here. It's just good gear with a focused team, and that's it. Now, of course, it is important that you have anti-status effect gear on your Legionnaire because things like burn and poison will drop him really quick. And if he goes down, then it becomes a problem for your cell swords. But again, like, look at this. We can just carve through these guys with reckless abandon.
Soldier squad, not even worried about it. Remember when these squads used to be scary? When a squad of three soldiers gave me legitimate trouble? Not anymore. Not anymore. And the best part is, because there's three enemies lined up in the front here, that's three whole targets that the lads are going to be able to follow in Slash whenever they come and attack our Legionnaire, which means they're going to crumple instantly. And so long as we're landing our attacks, we don't have to worry about running out of following Slashes either, since it regenerates its own passive points. And because they're all level 2, even if they do happen to miss one, and if they don't have any passive point boost in gear, they still have two chances for their following Slashes to hit before they're out of passive points. It's so easy to carve through an entire enemy squad with this. Like, it's actually kind of disgusting, but I love it. And you'll watch, too, after this fight, you'll see we're going to get a good amount of money just for beating this random enemy squad. This isn't a boss squad, but we're going to get a bunch of money out of it nonetheless. And you see right there, we didn't use a single active point the entire time. We got 720 gold for defeating one random enemy unit. It's insane. Didn't have to use any Valor Point abilities, didn't plunder anything, didn't double anything with any sort of items. That's just from our gear. And it's not like we're incapable of normal combat because of said gear. It's, <laughs> it's so <laughs> wild, man. It's so, so wild. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to get rid of all these barricades, but I think the best way for us to do that, just for the sake of example, is we're going to pop a Hallowed Cornash. Get some extra Valor. If you haven't been doing this, by the way, I highly recommend that you do. Like you can see, I've got 15 Hallowed Cornash here because I've not needed them to actually like save me. They're just a good way to regenerate Valor. So, uh, And then we can bring out... Our squad here with our warrior. They can fly up. And then we'll crush them all with one solid swing. Goodbye, barricades and traps. Beautiful. Alright, come here. The time is nigh. All your reinforcements. Can't exactly say that I'm too worried about them. <laughs> okay, now see, this is... This is where you encounter something interesting. The fight fire with fire idea has never been more real than with this setup here. So, because these enemies are so much higher level than us, and because they have the same skill set as us, we're going to be getting a lot of countering following slashes back and forth. I could use an item to make this a little bit less painful, but we're still going to win, so I want to show you guys how this plays out, because it's going to illustrate just how strong this class is in general. Well, I mean, it definitely helps if we just annihilate one of them. Yeah, see the counter following slashes. However, the fact that we're promoted and they're not means that we have shields, so we're quite tankier than they are, even though they're much higher level than us, which is nice. I love the fact that Following Slash can trigger off of other Following Slashes. It's so wild. And there we are. And again, 360 gold. And that was a reinforcement squad, which carries less gold so that they're not as easy to farm. It's it's so insane. And we're not even maxed out. There's more gold-boosting gear that you can get. Like, this can go further. We can add a whole other character to this unit and put that type of gear on them. Like, this can keep stacking, which is truly insane. All right, the lads are back on their feet. Let's take it to the boss. Before we beat these, we're going to wind up popping a, uh, a Divine Favor or whatever it is that boosts our gold and our XP by two times. And we're going to see just how much we make off of these guys. Uh, the previous mission that I did on stream, the big mission to free the local major fort, got a whopping 12,900 gold off of the boss kill with this squad and that item active. It was insane. And see, just like that, we've cut two-thirds of the HP off of that Royal Knight. Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. 
And now that they don't have their front line, the soldiers in the back are going to be extremely vulnerable to our following slashes, and they're just going to crumple. Uh, Liquid Fortune, that's what it is, not Divine Favor. All right, get in there, lads. Finish it. Here we go. <laughs> if you don't have something relatively tanky in the front line, your whole squad will just crumple to this squad. How's it going to perform in online, in the PvP, in the arena? Very good question. I'm excited to see. And remember, these levels or these enemies are seven levels higher than us. Seven. When I went into this fight, it said, are you sure you want to engage in this battle? It's going to be extremely difficult. The chances of success are extremely low. And I mean, with judicious item use and a good squad, didn't mean nothing. Not to the super tax brothers. Yeah, 14,400 gold, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. That's the Super Tax Brothers in action, everybody. Uh, steal this squad. They're, the name of this series is going to be Steal This Squad. Whether we're talking about three units or one unit, doesn't matter. Steal these squads. You're going to be happy that you did. With that said, though, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Thank you all so much for watching. I do very much appreciate it. My name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.